Good evening. Welcome to our Bible study. It's uh, Thursday, October 3rd, or December 3rd. <laughs> I'm losing track of my months. I um, want to thank those of you that have stayed loyal to the, uh, to the Bible study. God promises you, promises you, that he will grow your faith as a result of joining this Bible study. Uh, before I get started, I just want to inform everybody that I'm going to be leaving tomorrow morning to go back to North Dakota for my mom's uh, funeral. I uh, leave tomorrow, Friday, and come back the following Friday. I'm going to try do everything that I normally do, but there's no guarantees. Good morning, Grace. Good morning, John. Uh, no guarantee because I have no idea what the schedule is going to look like. Morning, Park, Park, or evening, Parker. I say good morning, good evening. Uh, Parker just got back to Florida from his dad's funeral, and now here I'm going back now from my mom's funeral. Uh, a little scary getting on a plane, Parker. Uh, and, and then they tell me when I get back, I'm going to have to self-quarantine for 10 or 14 days. I'm not even sure how many. We'll see how, the, we'll see, we'll see what, how all that happens. So anyway, let me open with a prayer. Father, I thank you for those that are watching this live and those who will watch it later. God, I just pray that, that they understand that your promise is that you will grow their faith as a result of, uh, of just being in your word and reading it and studying it. So God, we're going to get into your word again tonight. And I just pray, God, that you would do what you promised. And we pray this in your name. Amen. We're in Acts uh, chapter 10. I'm going to start reading at verse uh, 23. Uh, let me let me set it up now. This is where Peter had a vision, and Cornelius also had a vision. Now Peter is a Jew, and Cornelius was a Gentile. Okay, and uh, and so Peter got a vision from God that it was okay to to go to to meet with the uh, with the Gentiles. So this is where we're at now in the uh, in the story. Okay says, when Peter invited the men into the house to be his guests, the next day Peter started out with them and some of the brothers from Joppa went along. The following day he arrived in Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet in reverence. But Peter made him get up. Stand up, he said. I am only a man myself. Peter at they had heard a lot about Peter. They knew that God, Peter was being used tremendously by God. They knew that many people were coming to the Lord as a result of Peter, so they had high respect for him. But Peter, Peter, humble enough to tell them, no, I'm, I'm just a man. Stand up. Talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to them, you are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with a Gentile or to visit them. But God has shown me that I should not call any man impure or unclean. So when I was sent for, it came without raising any objection. May I ask you why you sent for me? Cornelius answered, Four days ago I was in my house praying at this hour at three in the afternoon. Suddenly a man in shining clothes stood before me and said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and remembered your gifts to the poor. Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He is a guest in the home of Simon the Tanner, who lives by the sea. So I sent for you immediately, and it was good for you to come. Now we are all here in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. Then Peter began to speak. I'm going to, I'm going to read to you everything that he, that he shared with them. Peter was an evangelist. He shared the gospel every chance he got. Morning, Alicia. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, telling the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses to everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen. 
by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God anointed as judge of the living and the dead. All prophets testify about him, and everything who believes in him receives righteousness of sins through his name. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter was astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? Question mark. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. Now, you have to realize now that the, the, the Jews felt that, the, the, that Jesus, was, the, Jesus was the God of the Jews. It always has been that way. Jesus poured his spirit out on, on the Jews on Pentecost. They spoke in tongues as a sign of receiving the Holy Spirit. Now here they're witnessing Gentiles doing the same thing. So they were astonished that God was pouring his spirit out on Gentiles who are non-Jews. And they were, they were astonished. Um... Verse 34 says, God does not show favoritism. Now, what about today? This is what I want to talk about. Um, who is God pouring his spirit on today? Uh, we assume that it's only Americans that are being saved. <laughs> yet, yet, hear this. There's more missionaries coming into America than there are missionaries going out of America. And missionaries going out of America are going to countless countries. And yet, all those countless countries are sending missionaries into America, and there's more of them than there is going out. They see America as a, as a, as the, as a grounds to share the gospel. I mean, think about that. Think about that. Uh, up till now, it's been America that's sent out missionaries. Been doing that for hundreds of years. Uh, the, uh, the the monks, Catholic monks, went into Mexico, went into Philippines, went all over the place establishing the church. Uh, for hundreds of years that's happened, and now all of a sudden missionaries are coming to America. Uh, what does that say about America? Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you the 10 countries with the most Christians. These are the countries that today have the most Christians, okay? The United States is on top of that list. We have more Christians than any other country. Then there's Brazil. Then there's Mexico. This is surprising. Then Russia, then the Philippines, then Nigeria, then the Congo, then China, then Ethiopia, and then Germany. Now listen to this. Africa is projected to have the largest growth of Christians in the next 30 years. They said that six to seven of the top countries with the most Christians will be in Africa. The poorest the poorest continent in, in the world. Uh, th th those are the 10. Now, no, here's where I'm going to surprise you. The 10 countries with the largest Christian growth, where, 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 where Christians are growing the fastest, okay? I'm going to warn you ahead of time. It's certainly not America. The United States is 30th. 30th. There, there's. I'm just going to name you the top 10 that have the highest growth of Christians today, okay? Which is showing you, which is showing, just like back then in Acts where we're reading, they were astonished that God was pouring his spirit out on Gentiles. Today, you're going to be astonished where God is pouring his spirit out. Where he is pouring his spirit out. And it's not in America. Number one, you, I could have you guess for, 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 for a month and you wouldn't get it. Nepal, Nepal, number one, then China, number two, then United Arab Emirates, number three, Saudi Arabia, number four, Qatar, number five, Oman, number six, Yemen, number seven, Mongolia, number eight, Cambodia, number eight, 
Bahrain number 10. Some of these you haven't even heard of. But you many have not heard of Bahrain or Omar or Qatar or even Yemen. One reason I know Yemen is because it's in the crossword puzzles <laughs> that I do. Uh, wow. Well, that's where Christianity is growing the most. It's astonishing. Astonishing. These are all Hindu, Muslim, and Buddhist countries. Okay? The majority of them that live in those places are the Hindu, Muslim, or Buddhist. <coughs> and yet, that's where God is pouring his spirit out the most. Amazing. Amazing. United States come in, comes in 30th for growth. 30th. There's 29 countries ahead of us for, for spiritual growth. So you can see that God has poured out his spirit in places that we least expect. I was shocked when I studied this. And it's the poorer countries most open to the gospel. The poorer countries most open to the gospel. Wealthy countries like U.S., Canada, Europe are closing their churches. Wow, more and more every year. I've shared with this you so many times. In the United States alone, six to 10,000 churches close their doors every year in the United States. Wow. They say that in the next 10 years, one third of the churches in Canada will close their doors. God is pulling his spirit out of the United States. God is pulling his spirit out of Canada. God is pulling his spirit out of Europe. I've shared this with you, I don't know how many times, that in Europe, less than 2% of Europeans go to church on a regular basis. Less than 2%. And the average age is in the 70s. They've lost the young. The, the places where God was pouring his spirit out the most, Europe, United States, Canada, now all of a sudden, God is pulling the spirit out of it and putting it elsewhere. Seems like the rich countries uh, experience hardship and turn away from God. Poor countries re experience hardship and they turn towards God. Good evening, Marcy. It's almost like God saying to America, it's almost like God saying to America, if you don't want to believe in me, if you don't want to tell others about me, if you don't want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, then I will pour my spirit out elsewhere. You hear that? In fact, I'll do it where you least expect. I will do it where people are excited about me. Now listen to this. We, As you know, we support a couple missions there in India. Many of our people have gone to India. Dave Sloan has gone there several times. Some of you watching this may have, have gone to, uh, to India. Uh, Marcy, uh, one of your daughter, one or two of your daughters went there to India. Um, so they got to see firsthand. And what's amazing is when they tell the villages that there's going to be a there, there's going to be like a Bible tonight, a Bible study. That here's a Bible study that we're having. That there's going to be a Bible study tonight. They come from miles away to come there. They come there and they sit there for hours waiting for the Bible study to start, anxiously waiting. They got big logs that they sit on and they sit sit every other way so that they can get more people on the logs. They fill the place up wanting to hear wanting to hear the word of God. In in the United States here, we almost churches almost have to give away gifts to get people to come. I know a church a year a couple of years ago that gave away a car. Gave away a car hoping to get more people to come to the church. Wow. And now listen to this. India is not even in the top 20 countries. For, of spirit. As alive as we've witnessed when we go to India, they're not even in the top 20. Not even in the top 20 for, spirit, for, for, for Christian growth. There's, there's other countries way ahead of them. Imagine what it would be like if you visited those countries. And they said there was going to be a Bible study tonight. What would happen? 
people, if they only had so much room, people would be fighting to get in. And in many of these countries, they have to do it underground because they're, 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 they're persecuted for their faith. They have to literally meet underground. And yet that's where the God, that's where God is pouring his spirit out the most. Just imagine how alive it must be in those countries. It makes me want to pack my bags and, and go there. And be more effective with sharing the gospel. So, script. This is what, this is what God is telling us. God is telling us not to quench the Holy Spirit. God is telling, don't put out the Holy Spirit's fire. Don't put out the fire of the Holy Spirit. First Thessalonians five nineteen says this: Do not put out the Spirit's fire. But boy. Uh, what's happening in our in our country? We're putting out the Spirit's fire. Church is closing their doors. In Ephesians 4.30, God says this, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed. Don't cause the Holy Spirit to grieve. How? By us quenching the Holy Spirit. By us putting out the, the Holy Spirit. Boy, I tell you, what we need to do is we, we need to pray for a revival here in America. We, we need to pray that God would pour his spirit out on our country. Because if we don't, he'll keep pouring his spirit out on all those other countries. Um, now, we've already studied many times the, what, the, the, what, the, what the Holy Spirit does, prays for us, uh, teaches us, convicts us. Uh, but if we, if we don't allow the Holy Spirit, if we keep quenching and putting out the fire of the Holy Spirit, then we won't, we we don't even allow Him to do His work. The, one of the main jobs of the Holy Spirit is to draw people towards Jesus, draw people towards Jesus. You now this has happened in in the United States for hundreds of years, for hundreds of years, but is it still happening today? Unfortunately, very little. I gave you these statistics. Listen to them again. 97% of the churches in America and the United States have had no new conversion in the, last, in, in the past year. Not one person has come to know the Lord. In 97% of the they exist for the saints. 97% of Christians have never led anyone to the Lord. You, you could go to India, I'll guarantee you, those of you that that gone there, you, you'll vouch for this. You can go to India and you will have all kinds of opportunities to lead people to the Lord. They'll come to you. You don't have to go to them. They'll come to you and want you to pray for them to, 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 to receive Jesus. They're, 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 they're literally asking you. Boy, that's not happening in the United States. So with all these facts, with all these facts, I don't blame God for pouring his spirit out somewhere else. In other countries where people actually want to hear about Jesus. They actually want to hear about Jesus. They are excited about hearing about Jesus. Wow. That's what we read about today in our in, in Acts where God poured his spirit out on the Gentiles and, and, and the Jews were there to witness it. God has poured his spirit out on these other countries, and if you go there, you're able to witness it. We're witnessing it in India. And as I said, India is not India is not even in the top twenty. But we're but we're 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 seeing it. And what did Acts 10 34 said? God doesn't show favoritism. God doesn't show favoritism. He doesn't care what nationality you are, he doesn't care what country you're from, he doesn't care what color your skin is, he doesn't care what religion you are. He He's pouring our spirit on our people that, that 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 are hungry, that are hungry for the truth. Now, I thought, I thought when this whole pandemic started, I thought, wow, that this is God, this is God using this pandemic to turn people towards Him. I, I was so convinced of it. I can remember driving on the ninety one freeway. I can't remember where I was going. But it was literally, I'm looking at the, I'm going eastbound and I'm looking at the westbound and there's no cars coming. 
and this is in the middle of the day, and there's no car. Now, have you ever been in the 91 freeway? Have you ever? You can go there at four, five o'clock in the morning, and you three o'clock in the morning, and you'll see all kinds of cars in that freeway. It was eerie. I'm driving down the freeway, and there's no cars coming from the other direction. God had shut down America. He had shut down the world. So I thought, wow, God is going to do amazing things in America as a result of all this. Quite the opposite. Quite the opposite. Quite the opposite. Seems more people are walking away from Jesus. Churches today are closing the doors at an alarming rate. Alarming. They, they say that that churches will, remember I said six to 10,000 churches close the doors every year. They say it'll be three times that amount for, two, for 2020 and 2021. That more churches will close their doors. Less people will be going to church. Is God pulling his spirit out of the United States? Is he taking his spirit and pouring it elsewhere? Now this is what scripture said. Scripture says that God says that he, he took, Paul says, that God took his spirit away from the Jews and gave it to the Gentiles to cause the Jews to be jealous. Literally jealous to, to say, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, we, we need to wake up. We need to wake up. We're God's people. We're God's people. We, we, we want the Holy Spirit. God did it to the Gentiles to wake up the Jews. I pray that God is doing it to other countries to wake up the United States. To wake us up. So that we will be jealous and say, wow, wait a minute, we want the Holy Spirit too. <sighs> this is what I'm planning on doing when I get back from uh, from the funeral. Um uh, You've heard of this. There's been many revivals in the past. Years ago when I was young, they used to have revivals. They would come to a town and put up a big tent, okay? And then they would hand flyers out throughout the whole town saying that there's going to be a revival tonight. Uh, they're going to, and it was hellfire and brimstone, boy. And, 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 and they'd fill the tent up with people. And then they'd do an altar call and, and give people, and people would, come forth in, in droves to accept the Lord. It was a big thing that went on for years. Uh, revivals, they called them. Uh, and, and then they've had prayer days in America where they try to convince Christians all over the United States to pray on that particular day. And so what I'm, I, I was sitting there thinking, well, what could, what could we do? What could we do to to stir the Holy Spirit up, to cause the Holy Spirit to want to do his work here in, in America. And I thought, this is what I'm going to do when I get back. Uh, I'm going to start with one day, and I'm going to, you know, I don't know how many people watch my videos. I know that I, I've had 400 and some just for the, list for the video that I did for in tribute for my mother. It's like 450 or 470. So it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and convince people to, to, that we're going to do it on the hour. Every hour, we're going to spend, we're going to spend two minutes. Every hour, we're going to spend two minutes in prayer so that, so that people all over the world, because I have friends in other countries, many of you got friends in other countries, and I'm going to try and convince everybody to, to, to share this with their friends also, that on the hour, all of us that, if we could get hundreds to thousands praying every hour for two minutes, so that at 10 in the morning we were doing it, and then I'd, then I'd post again on Facebook, get ready at 11, and then get ready at 12, and then get ready at 1, and, get, and go all the way up to a certain hour, and then start back the next morning again, to just pray. For a revival here in the United States. You, you know, back then they did it with tents. They've done revivals at Anaheim Stadium. But boy, today is the day of social media. Today is the day of social media. 
it was interesting. I was listening to the news and they were talking about all the, 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 the number one apps now that are being downloaded. And I forgot what the first one was, but the second one was TikTok. There was one called Cash. And, and the second one was Facebook. And they were amazed because they said, how can that be the most downloaded app? Isn't everybody already on Facebook? It's kind of like everybody is on Facebook. You don't have to do a revival on a tent. You don't have to go to Anaheim Stadium. Everybody's on Facebook or Instagram or the, some of the other ones. We, we, could, we could reach out to millions with praying to God to bring his spirit back to the United States to pour out his spirit on the United States. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it, okay? Uh, I'm always asking God, God, what else can I possibly do? What else can I possibly do? And God kind of laid this on my heart, okay? So I look forward to coming back uh, after the funeral. I have no idea how... how how busy I'm going to be there, uh, what what kind of reception I'll have when I'm there. But I plan to continue doing everything that I've been doing, all the videos I've been doing. But it's possible that I may miss some. I'm, I'm not sure. But I'll be back the following Friday. So the next Saturday we start back again. And then Sunday is our, is our, is our regular service. And then I'm going to start it on, uh, on Sunday. I'm going to start this on Sunday that we're going to start praying on the hour and we're going to continue it through until people just, until we, we reach the whole world. Until we reach the whole world with or the, praying that God would pour his spirit out. The pandemic didn't do it and I thought for sure it would, but it didn't. So let's try this, okay? Let me pray. God, I, uh, I pray that, that we... Uh, as Christians would, would wake up. God, we need to wake up. We, we can't just lay dead. We can't just give up. Uh, God, we have, to, we have to pray. Pray, 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 pray that you would pour your spirit out on our country. Uh, God, we, 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 we want to be known as a, as a Christian country. Uh, we want to be known as a Christian world. God, we see where you're pouring your spirit out on the on, on the whole world, the whole world, God. So, God, we are gonna we're gonna be praying to you in uh, in force, God, and and we know that you you hear our prayers, uh, God. You you know my heart, and you know the hearts of those that are watching this. So, God, we pour our heart out to you, and we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Hey, thank you for watching. Have a great day. I'll be on a plane tomorrow and uh, pray the, for safe travels and pray that I save health and that I return the same gym as I left with, okay? God bless you all and have a great night, okay? Share this if you want to. God bless you.